In the second part of the show, we get to see Chi Power in action. We get to see some super cool Kung Fu weapons. And of course, there are Antonio's antics. Oh, Shaolin waistband. <laughs> Very big. This is Qi training, a form of energy control system that allows Shaolin practitioners to do all those legendary superhuman feats. He's saying he's taking the Qi from, from his leg all the way up, he's taking the Qi from the leg all the way up, and he's bringing it all the way up into his head, and he said that when it's up here in your head, you can actually feel it. He said there's a, a unique feeling that he has in there, and then after that, then they can use it, and they can put it out. <laughs> he says, I'm, I'm glad he said this. He said, you can't just have chi, you have to have chi and exercise, okay? You can't just, just, just do chi by itself. And then he also said that, like, if somebody's about to hit you in a, in a fight or something, you can't be like, okay, wait a minute, <laughs> and, like, get your chi ready. <laughs> he said that, uh, there's two things we got to think about. He, he's got to practice the chi, but then he's got to practice the technique as well. And he said that, for example, if we're hitting, like if you're rigid and you're using your muscles and you hit, you'll have a certain amount of power. But if he's like totally relaxed with the, and, and he's got his chi going, he's like, pop, and just pop it in there. And that's where the real power is going to come from. Here, an instructor is going to use chi power to hurl a large sawing needle straight through a piece of plate glass. He's taking his, uh, his energy, his chi energy from all, because he's not going to use the other parts of his body, right? He's only going to use that right arm. He's taking all the energy and he's putting it into his right hand. He does not break the glass, but rather he punctures it, which is how he pops the balloon. Here we see a semi-neat conchoidal fracture where the pin went straight through the glass. The second time around, the instructor's not so lucky, and it takes a half dozen tries. I've seen the same thing happen with throwing knives in Japan. It seems that the practitioner is not in a perfect state of mind. They often <laughs> fail at this type of delicate task. <laughs> okay, a happy monk. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we see the instructors show us a variety of Kung Fu weapons. instructor seems to be going into a state of semi-ecstasy during this form. Here, I'm trying the weapons. Frankly, I'm not doing much of anything. I'm basically just trying not to hurt myself. <laughs> Clearly, I did not spend 10 years in a Shaolin monastery. 
There's about 65 other schools that also teach Kung Fu, and these are full-time, you live in them, uh, Kung Fu schools, right? And they're all loosely called temples or Shaolin temples, but they're not really associated with the temple and they're not religious. The kids who go to them often are actually from pretty good families who could afford to pay for their training. And the idea is that if you complete that course, 10 years, like, like, like Leo Gaoji did, 12 years, 14, whatever it is, and you get your little certificate, if you join the army or the police, you go in at a very high rank. If you're really good, you get on the traveling uh, Shaolin monk show that goes all around the world and performs. Uh, if you're good, you can get into movies. You can work as a bodyguard. There's a whole, so this is a career choice for these kids. It's like going to university or sending your kids to military school. It's like that, that they're hoping to get some kind of a job out of it. Of course, there are Antonio's antics. We're missing a lot of opportunities to do fake cutaways and like really bad dubbing. So, you want to fight? First, we drink wine. Innkeeper, more wine for all my friends. <laughs> Shaolin monks eating. If this was real Shaolin Temple, those guys would have been smoking and gambling while they were sitting there. <laughs> In our MMA-obsessed world, the accomplishments of Shaolin are no longer appreciated. Shaolin Kung Fu apparently neither works on the street or in the ring, but the hardcore monastic experience has never been about winning, which is why Shaolin has endured for 2,000 years and MMA probably will not. I'm your host Robert Klein and this is The Art of Fighting. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>